what's going on guys, CJR here today with just a real quick story about how I got my start on YouTube, how I started making videos, um, how I started collecting. Uh, it all goes back to uh, a blog or a, yeah, a blog that I used to read online. I can't remember how I found it, um, but it was called Dom and Liz's Yard Sale Adventures. Uh, you can go check it out. I, um, I won't leave a link, but uh, just search Dom and symbol Liz and you'll find it. Uh, basically, I think the uh, blog ran from like uh, 2005 to 2011 was their last uh, garage sale post and basically it was a, a husband and wife um, team that would go out and garage sale and then uh, it was kind of pre-YouTube people are before people were doing stuff like this but um, they would post pictures and like a quick blog about uh, how much they paid for everything how the deals went down and uh, it was amazing I remember being blown away by these scores so that's what got me into starting um, garage sailing. Uh, I later started watching, the two YouTubers I remember watching the earliest um, were Tom, TB46667. Um, you can check out, check out Tom's channel, I will leave a link for Tom's channel. And another guy who actually Tom knows, um, Easy B Man, Easy B Man something, I think it was like Easy B Man 27, who as far as I know is no longer on YouTube. But uh, those were the two guys that were picking up games and making videos about it, their collections and stuff like that. So that inspired me. Um, but one of the biggest influences, um, as you can see from the title, was uh, Mike Kennedy of uh, Retro VGS, Coleco Chameleon fame. He's the first person I, I actually listened to his podcast. Uh, uh, what is it? Retro? Uh, was it Retro Roundup? That was one of my favorite podcasts. One of the first. Um, retro gaming centered podcast it, it was up to like six hours long sometimes it would come out i believe once a month so they would they would have segments uh that they would each cover one guy was uh big into the um the hardware end of things i think he might have been an engineer pilot i remember uh big into pinballs i forget his name but uh socal mike mike kennedy had a segment called um it was about swap meet finds, but they would just, it was, because it was a podcast, he would just run the audio from his swap meet finds. He would record, at the time, I think he was just recording the audio, uh, recording the transaction between him and the seller at the swap meets. And that fascinated me. I would fast forward to that section. And uh, if I wasn't gonna listen to the rest, that one piece I, I'd listened to like crazy. I, I, I listened to how he taught, how he did things and uh, how he made his deals. And uh, it influenced me to, uh, one, go, go out and garage sales around the same time as the Dom and Liz thing that I found him. Um, but uh, down the road, he started making videos uh, on and posting on his YouTube, YouTube channel, which I think was like SoCal Mike, something like that. But he was the first person that I saw doing those style of videos. I think technically, um, Pat the NES Punk came before him. And then, uh, and then later, I think I saw Mike Gartner um, posting, uh, live, live garage sale videos after that. And then I got in shortly after Mike, I saw Mike's, but I had been thinking about doing it ever since, um, I saw SoCal Mike and then I saw Mike Gardner was doing it. He was uh, one of the few other people that, that were doing it at the time that I was thinking about getting in. And then, then of course, finally I decided to, uh, I had been garage selling for a while at the time. Um, but that's how I started filming my, uh, garage sale pickups. And, uh, that's really what's brought most of you to my channel. So um, that's a quick story about uh, how I got started on YouTube. I just thought I it was funny because Mike's um, name has been coming up in, uh, in, in all the media and podcasts and the retro gaming community has been talking about him a lot. Um, I mean, I don't know Mike. Um, I, I, I'll touch on the situation. I guess it's pretty messed up what he did to hide this. Um, I think his intentions at the beginning were good. I think I, I don't think he was purposely trying to rip people off. Um, I feel like he had the intention to actually release this console. I just don't think he had the money to make the prototype. And uh, what he did was really messed up trying to hide and pretend that he did have one and trick people into um, investing in this project before he had a working prototype. Especially what happened with the retro VGS. You think he would have been a little more transparent about the Coleco Chameleon going forward. Um, that being said, I, I kind of feel a little bad for the guy. Um, I mean, it's his own fault uh, that, that he did this, but uh, people like... 
Um, for one mistake like that, really the best thing to do is to own up to your mistakes if you do something like that. Just own it and apologize and people people are generally very forgiving if you own up to your mistakes. I remember the whole Tiger Woods thing. Like if he had just come out and said, listen, I did this, I am sorry, and uh, I'm, I'm working to, to be a better person or whatever, people would have forgot about it long ago. Uh, I just remember him going on and on with the denials and stuff like that. So um, always best policy if you get caught doing, everybody makes mistakes. I've made really stupid mistakes in my life that um, are pretty embarrassing. Uh, but you know, if I were to do something like that, I, you'd, you'd have to own up to it and just apologize. So that's my little rant about, uh, Mike Kennedy. Um, yeah, I just quickly, because, um, Mike's name's been in, it's just been so interesting just knowing that name from way back. And then actually through the retro, um, game magazine, which I actually have a copy right here. Uh, this is the latest one. Um, he was also, if you don't know, he's the uh, creator of Retro Game Magazine and uh, and um, Game Gavel too. So uh, it's unfortunate because his other two businesses are definitely going to suffer from this whole uh, Coleco Chameleon incident. But uh, anyways, I highly recommend. I've said this before, and uh, many people ask me how I plot my garage sale routes. The, the whole Dom and Liz blog thing was really cool because they also developed this uh, visual route planner and it's still active today. So I, I still use that visual route planner from 2006 to plot out my garage sale route. So um, I'll leave a link for Dom and Liz's, it's called Dom and Liz's Yard Sale Adventures. Go back and look at the um, blog. You think I get stuff for free or for cheap? Um, mm -hmm. They were getting stuff like, you know, hundreds of games for five bucks, like just insane um, amounts of money. Um, they were pretty cutthroat about their the way they dealt and the way that they uh, got this stuff for so cheap. Um, they they didn't really care about uh, you know if they were buying something they knew it was rare. They just they just wanted to get it as cheap as possible. Even more so than I do. I want to get things as cheap as possible, but I have a bit of a conscience. Um, but yeah, go check out Dom and Liz. Check out Tom TB four six six seven. Um, his name is something different. I think it's Golden Age Gamer now. I'll leave a link for uh, him in the description below. But uh, yeah, those were some of my main influences when I uh, first started YouTube. Um, do me a favor, actually. Let me know in the comments below if you've got a YouTube channel or if you're a retro game collector um, if, or if you go out to garage sales and stuff like that. Let me know who your influences were and who got you into the hobby uh, or making videos, collecting, garage selling, that kind of thing. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, right after this, I got a bunch of pickups to uh, show off. And then the next episode after Pips video will be a what I'm playing. Um, the past week I've played a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. I've been playing a lot more games this past week. So I want to talk about uh, a couple games specifically. One of them is uh, The Division. So uh, stay tuned for that. That'll hopefully be on the weekend. So uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. And do me a big favor. You can really help the channel just by hitting that like button. And until uh, the next episode.